Okay, welcome. We're going to use MailChimp, which is a, a wonderful online program that is free um, with some basic features. We're going to use this to design your email. I want you to use a real program to design a real email that you would use to send to a real customer. Um, so everything is as real as possible in class. So the first thing we'll do is um, simply click here on create. Uh, well, I'm assuming also that you've logged in and we're all using the same account in class. So that login credential or those login credentials are on our Blackboard, course Blackboard site under assignments, um, or I'll give them to you in class as well. So this is the new MailChimp interface. Um, we're in campaigns all campaigns and then you click create campaign over here and then click email and this is where we'll start. So let's name it to keep our class um, consistent and assign one email to one, your first and last name. Click begin. So when you create an email for real there are four uh, steps that you need to provide. First, who are you going to send it to? So you can, when you have like a paid account, you have a list of um, clients and, or, I'm sorry, customers or clients that you have that you can just tie in here in the paid account. With the unpaid account, you have to import them individually every time. Um, they give you a little bit for free, but not a tremendous amount. Um, the from, you'll have to type this in um, individually is here as well. With a paid account, you do have this um, defaulted uh, to whoever the account owner is. And for subject, same thing. You can type a subject in here. Um, you don't have to do that right now, but um, I'll type in um, just my new email blast. Traditionally, that would be something that you're sending to the, the customer so they can see what it is in the subject line. For my personal business, uh, for Windhill Books, we use just Windhill Books news and events. So maybe that's a better, um, a better headline. News, news and events. We'll click save. And then the last thing is, is you will design your email. So let's click design email. And it gives you the option of a couple different templates for free. These two over here. And then when you get into these, it says you have to upgrade to use. Upgrade is when you pay them a monthly fee. What I have done is if you go under saved templates, I have a class template in here that we all can use. And this is a good starting point for a good email. So let's click on that graphic design main template. And this will give you the template and the kind of editing interface that comes with MailChimp. It's a pretty simple process. It's a drag and drop. So right now I have um, what every good email should have, a header um, that is designed using the brand and the company name and then what it is. Here it's a weekly newsletter. You should always start with a nice three to five word headline and a short paragraph, maybe two to three sentences describing what benefit you're giving them or what kind of information you're trying to communicate. And then a nice large image is always helpful to grab their attention. And then a couple other images and a couple other um, product or service benefits that are highlighted. And here it's a bunch of cute pictures of puppies um, because that's what we do at the veterinary clinic is we fix little animals. And then at the end of every email, after you've given them your message and told them what you're trying to communicate, then we're going to briefly describe what we want them to do next. And this is traditionally referred to in advertising and marketing as a call to action. So we have a button down here. Buttons are clicked on um, much more than text with links or text with underlines. So we want a nice colored button down there. The button is, uses the color of the brand that we pulled in from, or that orange from the header. And then you can really title this whatever you want. Um, the call to action button should be changed, but what some people will use is read more, learn more, um, get your free sample now, buy now, shop now, get your coupon now. And then the last part down here that MailChimp puts in for you is um, the links to the social media pages 
for your client. So this would go to the veterinary clinic um, for Twitter and for Facebook, and then you could have a website link here and then an email link here as well. The bottom is really just the logistical stuff where you have the brick and mortar mailing address, how they could possibly unsubscribe if they wanted to, and who the list is coming from. In this case, it would be my email from the college because we're all using the same account. So to change any of these, uh, let's say I wanted to change this, I just simply click on it. There's a little pen to click edit here, but if you click anywhere, it will bring up the box here and you just simply highlight it. And this is where you make all of your changes to your text. When you're done, save and close. And then those, those changes will take effect here. If you want to change uh, one of the photographs, you click on that as well. And you can see that all the photographs um, that I have in here are 600 by 500. I like that consistency so I can swap them out here or down here. Um, they're simply just smaller when you put them down here. But if I wanted to replace this, I can click replace and upload or get a new, um, a new one from the library that I uploaded before. So we'll save and close that. Um, I will have two other tutorials on email marketing. The first will be how to create this header in Illustrator and then save that um, to use on the web like this and um, how to bring it in. So if we wanted to swap this out, once we make our header, you'll see that this is 600 by 200. And then we would just simply click replace here and upload your new header that you create. So we'll do that in another video. The second video that you'll need is one that shows how to, once you've found all of your photographs on Unsplash or Pexels.com, remember, be sure all your um, email or all your photographs are from a site that you can use commercially. Don't just Google pictures of dogs and use those because they're not available for commercial use. Um, those would have copyright issues. So unsplash.com and Pexels are good websites to do, to use. Um, so the second video is how to take all these photographs and make them web friendly through Photoshop and make them all 600 pixels by 500 pixels. So that's a second video that you'll watch. Okay. So once you're done editing here, you can always just um, save this, save and close, and then you can click continue up here, and this will go back to, I'll show you here, it'll go back here, and you can see our changes have already been saved here automatically, and if I go back to campaigns up here, you will see that this that I just created, um, this email is saved here under my name. So. If you do some of the homework, you save this, you're done with it, um, and you want to come back the next day to work on it or the next evening to work on it, simply just come in, log into MailChimp, go to Campaigns again, and click on your header. <clears throat> and go into Edit Design. And you'll be right back in here changing what you needed to change. And then just go back to Continue. Um, and you can bounce back to campaigns. If you're in campaigns, you can also go over here and click edit too instead of clicking the name of it. A couple different ways to do it. Okay, thank you. Be sure to watch the other two videos, the one on how to create your header in Illustrator and the second, how to make all of your photographs the same size and make them web friendly out of Photoshop. With this video and those other two videos, you should be able to create your entire email marketing campaign. Thank you.